We appreciate it. Welcome to International Fight Week. Before we get started, obviously UFC 226 is this weekend. We have the Ultimate Fighter finale this weekend right here at the Palms. And um, let's get it started. Who's got the first, uh, first question? News, unfortunate news, of course, with the, with the cancellation of the previous co-main event. I'm curious, what can you tell us about Max Holloway at this point? An update on, on his health and just kind of what's going on with him. Yeah, it, it's a weird situation. <clears throat> I was just talking to Jeff Nowitzki in the back, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of different, um, you, you know, people. Some, some people think it's concussion-related, and some people think it's weight-cutting related. So they haven't really got down to the bottom of what it is, but uh, according to him, he feels fine, and, uh, but obviously he's not fine. So we're gonna continue to uh, try to figure out what's wrong with Max Holloway. So but I guess- In the meantime, there, you know, there, there's no way that, that, that this guy's gonna fight anytime soon. Okay, I was gonna ask him, you said anytime soon. So with that in mind, they were still figuring it out. I mean, is there even a ballpark, a time frame, an idea when he could fight again? I can't exactly what the time frame is but when you look at uh you know he he was getting ready for a fight that fight fell out then he was getting ready for another fight and and he didn't make weight and couldn't make the weight and, and the list goes on and on three or four fights i can't remember exactly what it was but the guy's been training and cutting weight you know for three four fights in a row um yeah it's, it's very weird we'll figure it out and that's that i guess the, the flip side brian ortega um what do you do with him in the meantime? I mean, do you have any idea of, of getting him another fight? It sounds like maybe you tried to put something together this weekend. It didn't happen. Um, what, what's the next move for him? We're working on it. We're working on it. So, obviously, uh, literally Jeremy Stevens will not stop blowing me up. He wants this fight so bad. He said he'll take it on short notice. He's cutting weight already and, and uh, with the hopes that, that Ortega will accept the fight. Ortega has turned down the fight. Um, so... I don't know. We'll see what happens. Nice. And I guess uh, still a good card. I mean, even with that unfortunate news, still a very, very good card. I'm just curious, Dana, what the thought process was, how you picked these two guys, the other two heavyweights here, to be your co-main event. Was it, a, was it an easy pick? What was the decision-making process? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, when, when you're putting together a card, and especially it's International Fight Week, um, it, it takes a lot of timing and, and things to come together and, and, and be right. A lot of guys were healthy. A lot of guys hadn't fought in a while. And Everybody wanted to fight on International Fight Week. And then what was awesome, too, is that these two accepted a fight with each other, light heavyweight versus the heavyweight champion. Um, which after, when they both won their last fight, I felt this was the funnest fight to make in the heavyweight division right now, and they both agreed to it. So, yeah, and let's not even talk about these two. I mean, that's, that's another, another great heavyweight fight. <clears throat> We got Mike Perry versus Felder. You got Chiesa versus Pettis, which was supposed to happen. <clears throat> um, the whole card is stacked with great fights. Prelims are awesome, too. So thank you. Yes. And just quickly, if I could, for, for Derek Lewis, uh, it was already a big fight. I think people are excited about this. Now it's the co-main event of International Fight Week. I want to ask, you know, just kind of if it changes anything for you to have a little added shine, a little added spotlight. And if you feel that maybe, you know, with you fighting right before the heavyweight title fight that night, if maybe timing might work out, stars might align, and this could mean a, a special night for you, maybe a title shot in the future. It really don't matter because, you know, I feel like, feel like we should have been getting paid pay-per-view points anyway, so everybody really buying the pay-per-view because of me and Francis. <laughs> That's right. Fair play. Uh, last thing for me, I wanted to ask you, Francis. I mean, there you are. Now you're, you're sitting right next to Stipe again, and, uh, you know, things worked out that way. I want to ask if you're excited to kind of have this shot again, if you think, you know, maybe an impressive performance against Derek would give you a chance to, to maybe go against this guy again. Yes. I mean, I'm really excited to get back in the autogone. You know, um, I lost my last fight against Stipe, and then it was a great performance uh, for Stipe, but I... I learned a lot about that fight. I'm pretty sure that uh, um, the rematch will be different. I'll do better than I did the last time, and I will do great. Uh, DC, DC down here in front to your left. Uh, okay. 
Everyone always says the next, the next fight is their biggest, but you fought for world titles before. You fought John Jones multiple times right here, right now. Do you think this is the biggest one of your career? Yeah, it's the biggest fight of my career. Um, I'm fighting the most successful UFC heavyweight champion of all time, the baddest man on the planet. So nothing I've done to this point uh, over uh, is bigger than this. Now, the reality is um, these guys, all great guys, they're sitting up here in a national fight week, and it's a big deal for them, but this is where I've lived. I've lived in these moments since I first started fighting. It's just another fight to me. Saturday, I go fight Stipe, great fighter, great champion, but I win again. One of, uh, one of your teammates, obviously, Cain Velasquez, uh, how much of a part has he played in this camp, uh, I guess, preparing for? He's been massive. I mean, I rely on my partner so much for everything that I do, winning or losing. Those guys give me every part of themselves, my team. Uh, they're scattered all through here, they're 20 people. You know, it takes a village to build a champion, and uh, to get two titles, it takes even more. So. Um, I, this performance is dedicated to those people, my family, my wife, and my kids, and uh, my teammates, because without them, couldn't get it done. And uh, I guess we all know Kane's had a lot of injuries as well, right? Yeah. If he hadn't, do you think he would be the heavyweight champion right now? Yes, he would. I tell you, man, listen, these guys, hey, everybody in the heavyweight division, Stipe has been phenomenal. Like, he's a great champion, but I still believe that there's nobody like Velasquez, man. I've, I've trained with him a long time. Fought a lot of the best heavyweights in the world, but there's nobody like him. Uh, just one last one. Dana, um, we have the precedent that when Connor won a second belt, very quickly afterwards, he, he got stripped of one of those titles. This weekend, Daniel could legitimately get a second belt. Like, what, what will happen there if he does hold two titles? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something we'll talk about, just like we did with Connor. We talked about it and uh, figured out what we wanted to do, and we'll do the same thing with Daniel. Hey, Stipe, how you doing? You know, the big news, obviously, in the sports world is LeBron James is no longer with the Cavs, and people in Cleveland are, are looking for the next face of Cleveland sports, and how would, how would you feel about that? Would you embrace that, you know, if you, if you had that kind of moniker? Uh, honestly, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> I mean, LeBron left, it is what it is, uh, but uh, we have so much more, not just me, but we have the Indians, you know, the Browns are making, uh, making moves, finally, hopefully they can win a couple of games next year. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'm not being funny, I'm being serious. Like, listen, guys, come on. Uh, no, they're really good, I love everything they're about over there, and uh, they, they, got, they made a lot of big moves this offseason, so uh, I'm, listen, uh, it is what it is. You know, if they want me, you know, if they put something about me, great, if not, I'm just, I'm just proud of the city, I love the city and where I came from. Well, how would you feel about that if they put up a poster of you or, or a big sign of you one day? Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be sweet. I mean, who wouldn't want that? I mean, I mean, I went in my barn to myself because I'm selfish. You know, I look at it all the time. You know, so no, it'd be great though. It'd be great. Hey, quick, Dana, for you. You know, I just asked Stipe, can he be the face of Cleveland sports? But can Stipe be the face of the UFC going forward? But he is though. I mean, if if you if you've ever been to Cleveland. You know what I mean? They, they, they love Stipe in Cleveland, man. He, he is one of the big guys. He goes to all the games. All the other athletes know him. All the fans know him. He, he really is that guy. Um, listen, when the heavyweight champion of the world lives in your city, you know about it, and it's a big deal. You know what I mean? And yes, I, you know, the guy's got more wins than any other heavyweight championship, you know, for title defenses. And, you know, tonight he's, go, or Saturday night, he's going up against a guy who's never lost at heavyweight. So this is a big fight for both of these guys. It, it's, it's, a, it's an important fight. It's a big fight. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big notch in, in, in Stipe's career, for sure. DC, for you, what are the challenges of fighting a guy that is five inches taller and you has an eight inch reach advantage on you? I mean, every person I fight is bigger than me. <laughs> I mean, when was the last time I was Last time I fought somebody I was bigger than was Jeff Munson. That was in 2010. And I felt like Muhammad Ali out there. I had the reach advantage. The only time I've ever had the reach advantage. But um, it's the same, man. These guys are, um, they're all the same. I approach them in all the same way. Somebody asked me earlier, they said, What's your approach to fighting Stipe? It's going to be the exact same thing. I'm going to go forward, try to walk him down and exhaust him. I'm going to try to take him down. I'm going to try to wear on him and, and pressure fight him. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel nine years into my career. I'm 5'11", at best, with my tall shoes. 
And uh, I'm a grinder. And that's what I'm going to do to Stipe on Saturday. Um, question for Dana. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, question for Dana, first of all. Going back to um, the Max Holloway situation, uh, uh, can you just assure us that he um, has had uh, MRA, MRI, EEG scans, and he will be having those? I did speak to a consultant neurosurgeon and kind of talked him through the comments that, uh, that Max's team had put out, and you know, he said it could be a number of things. That was his diagnosis from very simple things to like the beginning of epilepsy or whatever condition it is, but can you assure us that he is going through all these testings? No, he's done no testing. Of course he's done testing. <laughs> of course he's done testing. We're, we're, we're running him through every test there is, and he probably needs to, you know, I, I, I just got back from vacation to, to today, so, I, the, you know, I'm just getting in the loop on most of this stuff, but... You know, he, he needs to go to, like, the Mayo Clinic or one of these type of places and do a full, um, yes, we will take care of Max Holloway, and he'll go through every type of testing there is until we can figure out what's wrong with him. Yeah, the question was just posed, as, as you said, he's saying he's fine, and obviously he isn't. There yeah, is well, originally this happened on, I believe, Monday. this started on Monday, and um, he went through a bunch of tests at the hospital, and they thought he was fine. Then, you know, he did that interview with Michael Bisbing and, uh, you know, people started to realize that something wasn't right and they brought him back in and started testing him again. Uh, thank you, Dana. Question for Daniel. Daniel, um, obviously you have been campaigning at uh, Light Heavyweight for some time now. Um, surely there is a difference stepping back in against someone who is potentially going to be perhaps 20 pounds heavier and is... Has no, he's not going to be 20 pounds heavier. <laughs> I'm just hoping I'm not heavier than he is getting on the scale. <laughs> He's definitely going to be having it. <laughs> you know what? You know what this guy told me at the Ultimate Fighter? I said, um, I said, what do you think I'm going to wait for the fight? And he said, you'll be cutting the 265. <laughs> That's not true. You don't no. think I'm that undisciplined. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. Not true at it's all. It's going to be close. No, but um, it's some challenges. You know, obviously, um, there were some challenges in training camp early because my weight was heavy and I was trying to spar and train and do everything that I do as a light heavyweight with the extra weight and it was difficult. I felt my body like I'm, I'm more sore. My back is bothering me. But once I got rolling and I started to get into shape, I was like, wow, you know, it feels good to not be essentially malnutrition. I barely get any food when I'm fighting at 205. And then I just had a real moment of clarity that when I was fighting that heavyweight before, I wasn't really training all that hard because I know what I do at 205 and to be able to carry the workload now I know that I'm training the right way for Saturday. Thank you. A final question for Stipe. Um, you, you know, conven some conventional wisdom is saying, as Daniel's just mentioned, that he may grind you and he might, may try and take you late and you may kind of gas in the later rounds. Do you feel that you want to get him out of there early to prevent that happening? And well, will you? Well, I think everyone wants to end their night early. I mean, that's the way to go. I mean, who doesn't want to get a knockout and go home early unscathed? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do whatever I got to do. If it's going to be a you know, knockout, decision, submission, I don't really care. I'm going to get my hand raised. That's all I'm looking for. Uh, just one for Derek uh, right here. Uh, are you enjoying yourself up there right now? I mean, you're kind of shaking your head. You're not laughing at any of the jokes. We've seen you fall asleep at press conferences before. Are you talking about it's fight week, man. So you're just locked fight in. Fight week. I'm in beast mode already. Just talking about it. A question for Francis. Over here, Francis, going into the uh, Stipe fight, you did a lot of work at the Perf Performance Institute, but I know that this time you did a lot of work uh, with John Wood at Syndicate. Is that your full-time team now? Have you, have you decided that that's your team? Yes, for now that's, that's my first team. I still work at the Performance Institute, but um, just you, uh, like for, the, for my conditioning and then uh, as a team, I use the syndicate, and I used to also work with my gym in Paris with MMA Factory, so they match together. Okay, um, and a question for Stipe. I like looking at your face during these press conferences because you have this look of sort of, you know, I'm unimpressed with everything my opponent is saying, and I'm just wondering, what do you think of Daniel at this point after doing tough with him and 
you know, I know sometimes he tried to get under your skin a little bit. How do you feel about Daniel going into the fight? No, I was waiting for you to come with those questions. That's why I was looking like that, because I'm, I'm used to it by now. Um, no, Daniel's a great, great guy. You know, we had a good time with the Ultimate Fighter. And listen, man, I work at the fire department. And I, get, I, get, I get my balls busted every day. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a little guy on the, on, on the, on the department. And like I tell you, I always, they always give me a plunger. No matter after a fight, they're like, hey, go to town. I'm like, awesome. Yay, get to work on the toilet, you know, and, or clean the floors or clean the trucks, you know. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not good. No one's going to be under my skin. Oh, my wife has that, knows that button. They're going to under my skin. Okay, then just a quick one for Daniel. I know that you keep saying that you're going to go down to 205 after this. That's the plan. But considering, just for, you know, let's just put John aside for a second. Volcan's fighting Alex. You beat both of them. You look to be in amazing spirits. You don't have to cut weight. Your expiration date is coming up in this sport. Why in the world, if things go well, would you go back down to 205? Like, what is there for you to do? I'm just, I'm honestly, like, really selfish. And I don't want to give up one of the belts. So it's, like, going to be a fight between Dane and I. But, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, either I fight at 205 or... I mean, I've already got a challenge in the back. Derek Lewis told me that he was going to knock me out right before we walked out of here. So, I mean, Derek Lewis may knock out Francis and then knock me out afterwards. I don't know. I know they got guys that are lined up to fight me. They've been, he's been sizing me up since I got back there and called me small. He's like, well, you're a lot smaller than everybody up here. That's rude, Derek. He said it. Like, wow, you're a lot smaller than everybody else. What? That's crazy. Derek, what's your issue with Daniel? I want to know, too. He disrespected that Popeye's chicken on a commercial for years ago. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. DC, I wanted to ask you if you feel like since you fought at heavyweight, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you do have three heavyweights sitting up there on the stage with you. Um, yeah. Are, is, is, has heavyweight evolved? Is it a different division than it was the last time you were there? Yeah, you know, man, I don't know. I haven't fought there in, in five and a half years, you know? So I just know that when I went down, there were things at 205 that I never felt at heavyweight. I mean... Anthony Johnson hits just, he hit just as hard as any heavyweight I've ever fought, right? Jones did things that I don't think a heavyweight can do. So I've experienced so much at a much faster pace at 205. That's where I feel good about going back up. I know Stipe is a different type of heavyweight, and I know that he's fast, and I know that he's quick, but he's still a heavyweight. And there are things that you see in the lower weight class that you just don't see in this division. It's evolved. It's evolved. But that's why you see guys like him and, and Kane before him really sprint out ahead of everybody else because they were before their time. And uh, he's the face of the division, as he should be. And he's a great challenge. I'm excited about it. And just real quickly, one more. Dana, we kind of just, you got the key to the city and, and then we kind of just moved, moved immediately on. As a guy who's, who's from Las Vegas, I just wanted to know, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of awards over the course of your career. What is the significance of getting the key to the city of Las Vegas? <laughs> that guy said it's the interim key. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> he, yeah, no, it's, it's obviously very special. You know, we're, we're proud to be from Vegas, and, and um, you know, as an organization, we do a lot for this city. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's an honor, and I appreciate it. Dana, with Max falling off the card, and this happening last year with Amanda on the day of the fight, actually, how frustrated are you with this happening to the fans and, you know, missing some of the fights that they're looking forward to? And is there any kind of things that you can do to, you know, help this process moving forward? Is there any kind of review or procedures or anything like that you're going to change to make, try to ensure this doesn't happen anymore? It's impossible. It's impossible to ensure what happened to Holloway doesn't happen. It's just, it's one of these crazy things. Listen, you're dealing with human beings. People get sick, things happen, you know, it's, it's uh, 
it, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's, it, it happens. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, we, we, we've done everything you could possibly try to do to, 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 to make these guys healthier, to, you know, to um, give them a safer place to train, and et cetera, et cetera. Eat the right foods. I mean, we have a restaurant at the, at the PI where they can eat for free, and we've done everything that, that you can possibly do to, to try to limit this. And does uh, Brian Ortega's answer absolutely no, or d does he still have time to change his mind on Stevens? Oh, his manager's sitting right in the front row here. Uh, Ed Soros is here. All right. Bet you wish you didn't come to this press conference. Is it an absolute no, or is it a maybe? It's what? It's no. Get him, everybody. We did. We did talk. Frankie Edgar is a stud. Everybody in this planet knows that. We called him. He said yes. And his family came back and said no. His family was like, there's no way he's going to take this fight. That's an absolute fact. Calm down, sir. It really happened. So, yeah, he, he, he's a stud. He, he wanted to take the fight. He, he actually was going to take the fight against Jeremy Stevens. They wanted for the interim title. Um, you know, believe me, we, we, we tried everything we could to, to, to put another fight on this card, and uh, it didn't work out. Who has the next question? That's it? I think we were getting the rap sign from the back. That's it? All right. She'll be here tonight. I'm going to square these guys off, and uh, thanks for coming, you guys.